Hey boys and girls, it's time for another Sunday School with Miss Vicki, or Miss Nalangu. Do you remember? That's my second name that I got when I visited Africa. We're going to continue to talk about Saul, who has another name too. What's his other name? It's Paul. It's nice that they sound so similar, isn't it? So Paul's story, remember, he was Saul, and uh, his Hebrew name, his Jewish name, and he was going around and he was persecuting people who were following Jesus and believing in Jesus. And then he met Jesus on the way to Damascus. The light blinded him. He was healed by another man. And uh, Paul went and became baptized and was starting to preach all over. Then he went back to Jerusalem and he spent some time with the other uh, apostles. And we're going to pick up our story today in your Bible, if you want to go grab your Bible, um, Acts chapter 16, verse 16. We're going to read about two people, Paul and Silas, who had a very interesting time in prison. All right, so one day as we were going down to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit where she predicted the future. She was a fortune teller who earned a lot of money for her masters. So here's Paul, right? And here's Silas. And they're teaching to a big group of people. There's our big group of people. And there's our slave girl. She followed Paul and the rest, shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God and have come to tell you how to be saved. This went on day after day until Paul got so exasperated. That's a big word. What does exasperated mean? I think it's how a lot of us feel about being stuck at home these past billions of weeks. We're tired of it. We want it to be over. That's exactly how Paul felt. He was tired of the slave girl shouting things at them. And so he got exasperated that, and he turned to her and said to the demon within her, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. Instantly it left her. Isn't that amazing? He did miracles just like Jesus did. But her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered because they were making lots of money off of her. So they grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the authorities in the marketplace. So I have a, I have a soldier here. We're going to bring him into the picture. Right? And here they are. They're yelling at these guys. The whole city is in, uh, in an uproar because of these Jews, they shouted to the city officials. They are teaching customs that are illegal for us Romans to practice. A mob quickly formed and Paul and Silas and the, uh, I'm sorry, I misread it. A mob quickly formed against Paul and Silas and the city officials ordered them stripped and beaten with wooden rods. They were severely beaten and then they were thrown into prison. Let's see what that looks like. No big trees in this picture, all right? So Paul and Silas, so they were beaten and they had all their clothes taken off, but we don't really have flannel graph of that, which is for the best. There's Paul, there's Silas, right? And here's the guard. Here's another guard. And they're in chains, here's our chains. So there they are in prison. What did they do? They did the things that Jesus did. The jailer was ordered to make sure they didn't escape. A jailer is someone who's in charge of the jail. And it's his job to make sure nobody gets out. So the jailer put them in the inner dungeon and clamped their feet in stocks. That just means they had their feet um, in like a wooden or a metal thing so they couldn't even walk around. Around midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. 
Suddenly, there was a massive earthquake and the prison was shaken to its foundation. All the doors immediately flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. Whoa! The jailer woke up to see the prison doors wide open. Uh-oh, what was his job? Don't let anybody escape and now suddenly all the prison doors are open. He assumed the prisoners had escaped, so he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul shouted to him, stop, don't kill yourself, we're all still here. The jailer called for the lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Friends, this is a story that has a lot of twists and turns. First of all, the fact that Paul is now being persecuted and thrown in prison when he was the one who used to do all of those things to other people, that is just amazing that his story has changed so much that God took his number one enemy and turned him into his number one fan. But what also happened was Paul and Silas were preaching and they performed miracles like Jesus did. That's pretty cool too. But then... Performing these miracles got him in trouble and they got thrown in prison. So they're singing and they're praying and the earthquake happened. And then the jailer came in and was ready to hurt himself. But instead, he comes to know Jesus. And the Bible tells us later on in this chapter that the jailer, it's the middle of the night, the jailer got baptized in the middle of the night. And everybody in his household started following Jesus and everybody in his household got baptized. And then he fed Paul and Silas. He cared for their wounds because remember they got beaten with sticks, big rods. That probably left a lot of marks. That's pretty amazing. So it's not really a normal thing for jailers to bring prisoners home. But after the jailer learned about being saved and learned about knowing Jesus, his life changed. I think that's amazing. Here's our verse for today. It's from Acts 13, 31a, which just means it's the first part of verse 31. It says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Boys and girls, it's my greatest hope that you know Jesus and that when you know Jesus, he's going to change your life and the things that you don't really want to do but you know are the right things to do, you're going to want to do. And the things that you know are the wrong things to do, you're going to say, I'm not going to do that. That's not what I'm supposed to be doing. But I'll tell you what, friends, it's hard even for me as a grown-up. God is still working in my life, and he's going to keep working in your life. So it's my prayer that you believe in the Lord Jesus. Miss Wendy and I love you guys. We miss you. Remember that God loves you, God made you, and God has a plan for your life. See you next time.